just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it A Super Bowl is only one trade away. First question came from my guy Jared L. He said, Engraving, my question is, what would you give up for DK Metcalf? I love it already. I love it already. I love it. Uh, what would I give up for DK Metcalf? I give up a first. I give up a second. Um, and I'd probably give up a first in a second. And, and the reason that I would is because I wouldn't give up too much now. Um, because we would be alleviating a lot of pressure off of those Seattle Seahawks. Reason being because it's contract time, baby. And you want to get something rather than nothing, right? Right? And, and this would give Lamar an established, an established, big, big time playmaker now too. Wide, outside, wide receiver. Now, I, I see a lot of people say, oh, man, Lamar Jackson, he only throws inside the numbers. He only throws to the tight ends. Where are his best pass catchers? Who are his best pass catchers? Who are his biggest targets? Who are his targets that have the, the, the most possibility to win those one-on-ones, those jump balls? Who are they? But Lamar still threw outside the numbers as well. But now, if, if you gave him a DK Metcalf... That would be the most established outside wide receiver that he had ever had. And then, on top of that, you would still have Rashad Bateman. You just help make everybody's job so much easier like that. So, I would love this move. I ain't even got to finish the rest of your question. I, I would love it. But let's continue because you got a lot more to say. He said, now, oh, see, I, I should have waited because he said, now, before you answer that, before, boy, I already done answer, but anyway, he said, now before you answer that, I want you to keep this in mind. The Ravens have had four first round selections in the past two drafts alone. They are an extremely deep team at multiple positions and in my opinion, are in good shape to come up off of some of them draft picks. I agree. Love you, Jared. Uh, I think it's hilarious that Ravens fans pay a bunch of money for team merchandise, tickets to games, and even cable, satellite, and streaming service subscriptions just to watch Ravens games, but in turn, act extremely bullish when it comes to paying up for big talent. Steve Ashadi is worth almost six billion, not million, six billion dollars, uh, up almost two billion since Lamar has joined the team. Not saying there's a correlation, but hey, the jig is up. Uh, there is a correlation. It ain't no coincidence. Lamar has gained the Ravens sig a significant amount of money, significant, because he is must see TV and he is our must see QB. Better pay him his money too. Anyway, um. He said, not saying there's a correlation, but, hey, the jig is up. Mr. Lamar doesn't think he deserves a new contract till he wins the Super Bowl. Now, that part, that is false because we, we, we spoke about that uh, last week or the week before last. He didn't say that. That was Mr. Bishad. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I see what he's saying. Okay, he's, he's talking to Bishadi here. Okay, I, I see what you did there. He's saying the, the, jig is, the, the jig is up. Mr. Lamar doesn't think he deserves a contract till he wins the Super Bowl. So he's quoting Steve Bashotti there. Ah, uh, you, you see, you almost got me, but he, he, that was good. I like that. DK Metcalf is everything we need in a wide receiver. Speed, size, jumping ability, takes the top off of defense, wins jump balls. He'll take pressure off of our other weapons and not only make the Ravens Super Bowl contenders, but Super Bowl favorites. I agree. Raven, like you mentioned, Ravens have so many depth in so many other places. So much depth in so many other places. Except wide receiver. That's the only one. That's the only place. And you can talk about outside linebacker as far as pass rush and stuff, but wide receiver, man. He said again, if you were in EDC shoes, what would you give up for DK Metcalf? And what would you give him a would you give him a contract similar to AJ Brown's? And he said, Thank you. I love this. Uh, I, I love this so much. Um, Y'all know how I feel, but you, you brought up some great points um, as far as the reasons why. Why it just, it makes so much sense. And again, the conversation is always, oh, we, we can finally give our young guys a shot. This wouldn't stop them from getting a shot. And this would give the Ravens depth, 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 depth. depth. So much Ravens fans, they, they love the depth in so many other places. So many other positions. 
But every time you speak about wide receiver, you even think about wide receiver before you say anything. Even if you think about wide receiver, so many Ravens fans are like, stop it. Stop it right there. We got to give our young guys a shot now. Got to do it. You bring a DK Metcalf, young guys are still getting a shot. They're still, still going to get a chance. Now, some guys are going to move down on a depth chart again, just to be straight up, as y'all all know. But guys are still going to get a shot, man. They're still going to get a shot. But he would make the, he would give the Ravens a bigger shot. He would give the Ravens a bigger shot of being Super Bowl contenders, not just being the playoff team, but being legitimate Super Bowl contenders. And there would be less question as far as how far can this Ravens team go. They get somebody like him, I'm all in. I'm all in. It, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, hey, Ravens can really do this thing now. And it's, it's possible they could do it now without him, but it's just so much unknown. But with a D, adding a DK Metcalf. <laughs> like, again, size, speed, and playmaking ability. Lamar Jackson has not been given somebody that has all three at wide receiver. Size, speed, and playmaking ability. Hollywood has speed. And he, of course, made plenty of big plays. Didn't have the size, though. So there, was, there were limitations there. Lamar still made it happen with him, but there were some limitations there. That ball for Hollywood, the ball has to be put in like the perfect spot. Seth Roberts. Willie Snead wasn't really no outside receiver. There's Bryant. Sammy Watkins. Now, Sammy Watkins is decent size. Decent speed, too. He could make some plays, but... He couldn't play because he was always hurt. So that th this would give. <laughs> I'm with it. Next question came from my boy Marco G. And, and appreciate you being a patron, Marco. He said, what's good engraving this, your boy MG? I think the Ravens are fleecing the NFL, and I don't mind it at all. Uh, the way they're doing it is they're upgrading the non-premium positions like O-line, tight ends, and the running back group, and therefore upgrading and improving the wide receiver position by proxy in an indirect way. Oh, yeah, I, I've, I've, seen, um, I've seen the video that's been going around by uh, FTC. Oh, I forget the, the second part of the YouTube channel name. But um, I've seen that video, and they did a phenomenal job putting that video together. And then, of course, it, it came from an article that was written and the article did a, was put together good, too. Um, but for me, I, I still... And, yeah, Ravens, they, they value these other positions that the, the NFL doesn't value, but they still get some playmakers from them, like tight ends, offensive line, or safety, uh, linebacker, all that stuff. And, again, it was a phenomenal video, uh, great points. But what has that got them? What have they won? What have the Ravens accomplished recently? Really over the past, what, nine, ten years? What have they gotten? That's my question. They made some good points, again, in both the video and the article about the Ravens fleecing the NFL. What have they got? Have they fleeced their way to a Super Bowl? No. They have gotten some great players, and it also talked about they know when to let players walk and whatnot. And I, uh, but what has it gotten them? Have they had true success? Have they? You can answer that question yourself. Anyway, uh, he said defensively they upgrade the safety position and bring in versatile safeties that can play safety, slot corner, and nickel or dime linebacker. Uh, essentially paying them to do uh, and play two or three different positions. Nowadays, quarterbacks want 45 to 50 mil a year, and you give your quarterback what he wants, especially if their name is Lamar. Uh, all I'm about that action, Jackson. However, instead of dropping 25 to 30 mil on one receiver, thanks to Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill, you sprinkle that on other positions and once again make the receiving core better by proxy. Do you? Because those, those names you mentioned, they, <laughs> they ain't just no average names. They ain't no average names. They ain't just a bunch of random players, man. But anyway, 
Um, when you improve the offensive line, Lamar can effectively throw the ball and the running backs can find gaps to run through. Therefore, making the running game respectable and forcing the defense to stack the box. When you have three tight ends who can play like receivers, that also forces the defense to stack the box due to the possibility of a run. And as a result, uh, receivers should have better opportunities to make plays since the attention isn't on them. In baseball, what's the difference between a single and a walk? I, I don't know. I don't know much baseball terminology, but I'm sure you're going to break it down. He said, both get you first base, right? I still fully believe the Ravens need quality depth at the receiver position. They just don't need to cripple their salary cap if they can do it in a different way. Your thoughts on that? Uh, thanks again for the content and peace. Um, you don't have to cripple your salary cap by investing quality uh, over quantity. And again, like we talked about in the previous uh, previous question, um, this is all those other positions. Ravens find a way to make it happen. They always find a way to make it happen um, with, with quality guys too. Quality guys. Um, but then uh, at receiver, that's when all the uh, the biggest question marks come up. And even amongst Ravens fans, too. Like, oh, man. They, they think about, oh, we shouldn't give up this for that guy. Oh, we can't afford that guy. Oh, he's going to cost two. It's only for wide receiver. People don't do that for any other position ever. It's always at wide receiver. It's the same, um, the same concerns. The same wonders, the same thoughts. And, and, and I think Ravens fans, they've been so conditioned to think that receiver isn't important. It's true. Ravens fans have been very conditioned to think that the wide receiver position is not important because of the way that the Ravens have built the team over the years and what they've done. But again, that first Super Bowl with that historic defense, that was that was defense. Offense, offense got, they, they had to make a little play here and there, but offense was chilling. They were like, oh, we, we cool. Defense was doing everything. Won the Super Bowl. Amazing. Great job. Great job. And they needed to play here and there on offense, special teams and whatnot, but defense, that was them. Second Super Bowl, they had three playmaking wide receivers and a playmaking tight end. Actually, one and two, two playmaking tight ends. Because Ed Dixon, he was doing his thing. And for he was actually doing his thing before Dennis Pitta was. But then it ended up flip-flopping and sort of like, uh, well, not really like Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews because it, was, it, was, it, it was a lot quicker uh, for Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews to flip-flop. But Ed Dixon was doing his thing before Dennis Pitta. Um, but anyway, uh, that Super Bowl year. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, is it a coincidence that that last Super Bowl year, they had three significant playmaking wide receivers? Is it? Anquan Bolden, Torrey Smith, and Jacoby Jones. And they had a playmaking tight end in Dennis Pitta. Um, and they had a playmaking running back in Ray Oh, Ray Rice. They had a little squad, man. Ravens had them a squad. And then they had players that made, play, made plays on defense, too. And that was back in 2012. Like, nowadays, like, you, you got to have significant playmakers, man. And not just at the tight end position. And your quarterback should not be doing everything, excuse me, <laughs> everything all the time. You should have more playmakers, man. Playmakers make everybody's job easier. There's been so much talk about Joe Burrow recently. How great Joe Burrow is. And Joe Burrow's a baller to me. That boy can play. He can play. Um, but a lot of people feel like with Joe Burrow... Uh, Jamar Chase makes Joe Burrow overrated and, I, and initially when I see that I'm like oh why you say that But they'll be like hey Jamar Chase He'll take a 5 yard slant He'll take it 60 Because of so much of what he does As far as yak What he does after the catch Why? Because he's a playmaker At the wide receiver position He's a playmaker And in my opinion You need those guys you need those guys. Look at Cooper Cup. Look at Odell Beckham Jr. Look at Stephon Diggs. Look at even Gabe Davis. Oof. <laughs> Look at, of course, Tyreek Hill. And the, I bring up those names because those are guys who've been in the playoffs recently, been in the Super Bowl recently because they're playmakers at the wide receiver position. Again, Ravens have conditioned fans to think that the wide receiver position isn't important when it certainly is. Their last Super Bowl came when they had 
playmakers at that wide receiver position. It is extremely important. It is extremely valuable. And it continues to be. It continues to be. I know they don't want to pay big money to wide receiver. I know they don't want to. But it, it is still an extremely valuable position. Next question came from my guy, Kevin, uh, the owner of Kentucky Cobbler. Shout out to him, by the way. Uh, he said, I have a question and a statement. Why doesn't Greg Roman have a simple in-game adjustment for when opponents have an answer for the pistol offense? All 22, great interview, by the way. Shout out to my guy, All 22. Um, is one of the only fans besides myself that has been saying Lamar needs to bootleg with his back to the defense. Uh, I would go even further with it, and I'd run the stretch offense that Peyton Manning's Colts offense mixed with San Francisco's zone block run offense and would still keep the pistol offense too. I'd also focus on the tight ends like the Patriots did when they had uh, Aaron Hernandez and Gronk. Uh, we don't need another receiver. Bateman, your tight ends, running game, and good defense will win you a Super Bowl. Uh, we we going we to see. We're going to see. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, this is a, a two-year run for the Super Bowl. Look at your young players mixed with your vets, and everyone fits perfectly for a two- to three-year run uh, for the Super Bowl. Um, I think, like, with, with the Ravens offense, um, yeah, he did bring that out. Because in, in the pistol, uh, he can't fully turn his back uh, to the defense. Um, and that that lessens the chance that the defense gets confused on if it's a run or a play action or whatnot. Um, adding plays under center would, would help so much um, because that then he could truly turn his back to the defense and catch them slipping. Um, but the Ravens, they just need more variety. Again, I know um, Greg Roman, he brought up, I think it was last year or the year before last, that Lamar was going to be running more plays under center. I think he ran maybe about five of them. But some of y'all brought up some really good points. We talked about, well, the offensive line, they weren't good at all last year. So if he would have ran plays under center, he would have been on his back in like two seconds because that offensive line would not be able to hold up in protection for him. Okay, cool. Well, this year they invested in that offensive line. So hopefully, 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 hopefully they can run more plays under center. They can do more formations. It's not just this pistol offense and that's it. They can do they can just do more because when you can do more it when you can have more variety, especially as an offense. And then you mentioned in game adjustments, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could take these guys such a long way, such a long way. And it's, it's, it's I feel like it's just simple things, man. It ain't got to be anything overly complicated. The things that you got to think about, too. No, it's some simple fixes. Simple fixes. Just a little kink here, kink there. Because we know that this offense, they produce yards. They produce points too. But it's these, these situations that they get in. And it's like, oh, what are we doing? What's going on? It's, it seems like they overcomplicate things a lot of times. And I was just talking to my guy about this yesterday. And it ain't even had nothing to do with football. But I was, t I was telling my guy, JT, like, man, why, why do we... And just as people, as humans, sometimes we just we, we can overcomplicate things and it can be these simple solutions, these simple fixes that can be so effective. But we can overcomplicate and overthink things. The same thing applies to, to Raven's offense. <laughs> but anyway, he said last thing. Oh, good timing too, based off of the previous two questions and what was brought up. He said last thing. Lamar doesn't need a big time receiver. I'm from Louisville and watched him in college. He just needs a very good offensive line and some ballers around him, like J.K. Dobbins, Bateman, likely Edwards, and look out for Beatty. Baller prediction. See, that's the thing. I, I see what you're saying, and I know you watched him. Yeah, and again, shout out to Kentucky Cobblers again. Um, and I've, I've seen it said, too. A lot of people also bring up 2019. they like, hey, look at his receivers then. Look at how they were. Look at what they did. Yeah, look at how he did. He, MVP. 36 and 6 at the league in touchdown passes. Phenomenal. 14 and 2. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he had a good offensive. But think about this. How great he did in 2019. He did a phenomenal job. They did a phenomenal job. And with how great the offense was, it made the defense's job that much easier. Think about this. Wouldn't you want the offense to be that much greater? 
And you just talked about it yourself as far as the in-game adjustments and different things that they could do. If you have more playmakers on offense, especially at the receiver position, it will allow you to do more. Defenses, you know they're going to be trying to take away Mark Andrews. He's still going to do his thing, but they're going to be doing that. Next up, they're going to try to take away Bateman. Why not have somebody of significance opposite Bateman too to get to make your offense that much more powerful? Why not? Why do we have to like settle and be like, all right, Lamar don't need that. He don't need that. He, he'll be good. All he needs is the offensive line and then watch him go to work. Why not give him the offensive line like it seems like the Ravens have and give him another playmaker? Why not? I just don't feel like we should just be like, all right, hey, that's all Lamar Jackson needs. He could do the rest. No, give this man ballers and watch him do even more. Last question on this episode came from my boy Justin C. He said, what's up, Engraven? How you and the fam doing? Oh, we doing really, really good, man. I appreciate you. Uh, he said, what do you think about Kyle Hamilton going against his former teammate, Chase Claypool? Not once, but two times a season. Oh, they, they were on the same team at the same time? Because how long Chase Claypool been out? He been out for... At least two years. Is, has it been three, though? Because Boykin came out in 2019. So 19, 20, 21. So this Boykin's fourth year. And Boykin, by the way, is on the Steelers. Don't forget that. Um, and if, if it's any team that could really draw out the talent of a wide receiver, it's them. So that should be fun. Uh, but anyway, um, Chase Claypool, he's been out for, I want to say two. Man, Kyle Hamilton, this is obviously his first year. So he had been at Notre mm. Okay, yeah, maybe they were teammates for like one or two years. I'm not sure, but um, he's going to have to bring it. He's going to have to bring it. It's against Chase Claypool. It's against Miles Boykin. It's against whoever. Whatever team they go against, he's going to have to bring it. But he will definitely be put in. Uh, there's going to be a big spotlight on him. It's going to be a huge spotlight on him. But for Kyle Hamilton, the benefit of him, uh, the benefit for him is that he has a lot of other talent on defense around him. And that can make his job that much easier. Get it? See, you see that? Kyle Hamilton, he has a lot of other. He's talented. Listen, he's talented himself. But he also has a lot of talent around him, therefore making his job that much easier, therefore taking pressure off of him to make his job that much less stressful and that much easier. You see how it, work? it works on defense? It can work on offense too. But anyway, he also said, uh, how do you feel about Dalen and Kyle being on the same team again? And keep up the good work and stay safe. Appreciate you. Oh, Dalen Hayes. Dalen Hayes is somebody that I I, I don't I feel like I don't talk about enough. Um, because I feel like with him, he has a big opportunity right now. Uh last year, preseason, he looked good. He looked good. And again, I know some people go, oh, it was just preseason. Well, if he looked bad in preseason, it'd be a different conversation. But he looked good. And if he can stay healthy, he has a big chance to do some things this year. We'll see what happens with Justin Houston. Bowser coming back from Achilles. Uh, Ajabo coming back from Achilles, too. He has a chance to do some things this year. They talked about him at minicamp at OTAs and stuff. Said he was looking Excuse me, said he was looking good there. And, hey, I know some people could be like, oh, it's just minicamp. It's just OTAs. Well, he's off to a good start. So, of course, now the pad's getting ready to come on in about a month. So we're going to see. But he has an opportunity to really do some stuff this year. And even in his – I think he only played in, like, one game last year against the Lions. He looked good. He even made a play. But I just um, – I'm looking forward to him. Dalen Dip Hayes Again shout out to my guy Haitian Sensation Cause he came up with that name And it stuck It stuck Dalen Dip Hayes Cause he got that little dip move man That swim move And it's like ooh So If he can stay on the field I'm excited to see him grow Shout out to Graven